Today, I'm going to take you guys through a standard home ozone treatment with me. I've had a good bit of questions on some of the other videos that I've posted about doing ozone treatments, and I'm going to try to answer some of those questions in this video. Now, first, this is the equipment that I use for a standard home ozone treatment. In this house, I'm going to be using five total machines. There's a stack of three and a stack of two there. I'll be using five fans, one fan for each machine. And to finish up the treatment after it's done, I'll be using a ULV fogger with Freshwave IAQ. Now the finish up treatment is a very powerful treatment in and of itself. I've actually done some odor removal jobs only using the Freshwave IAQ. But on treatments where I do use ozone, I finish up with the Freshwave IAQ it adds another layer of odor removal on top of the ozone. Second, it strips the ozone smell out of the air so it doesn't linger. And third, I can market my odor removal service as more than just a single process. Now, questions about what I charge. For a standard home up to 2,000 square feet, I was charging $325, and it would go up from there depending on the situation. I've now increased that price to $450, for a standard home up to 2,000 square feet. For cars and trucks, I charge $85 for individuals and I charge $65 for dealerships. For apartments, I charge $125 and that is a little on the low side, but I wanted to have a price point where they would use me continuously rather than just every now and then. If I price the service at $250 or $300, I don't think I would have gotten the repeat business. For the types of machines that I use, I have a couple different types. The first ones that I ever purchased and that I still use are the Max Blaster brand. And I've showed these in another video. But these machines have been real workhorses and they just they just keep working. The thing that I like about these machines is they don't use the cheaper Chinese type plates and transformers. They use some very heavy duty neon transformers and they use mica plates. Occasionally, machines that use mica plates may get a bad rap because they say that they're fragile, but the reality is, I've actually had one of these machines fall out of an attic onto a hardwood floor, and other than the corner of the machine chipping a little bit, the machine still works. So I don't buy into the fact that mica plates are fragile at all, but they're durable, they're reliable, there's almost no maintenance, and they put out a ton of ozone. So for people that ask me what kind of machine I recommend, I highly recommend the Max Blasters. I did build some of my own machines, and on these machines they do have the Chinese plates and transformers. They work, they work okay. I mean, there's nothing wrong with them. They work pretty well for smaller areas. And these machines are 10,000 milligrams per hour. The Max Blasters that I have are... I actually have four that are 15,000 milligram per hour and I have one 20,000 milligram per hour. And I have not had a lot of problems with these machines at all. A couple plates and transformers have burnt out, but in the end, they're still not as reliable as the Max Blasters with the neon transformers and the mica plates. And I keep all the machines in toolboxes just to protect them. And also as part of my setup, which you'll see in just a little bit on how I set these up. This is a three bedroom house, so I'll be using one of the smaller machines in each of the three bedrooms, one of the larger machines in the kitchen, and another of the larger machines in the living room. To move the ozone, I'm using simple box fans. In my opinion, box fans work the best for moving ozone, and you may be thinking that something like a blower may work better because it blows harder. And while they do blow harder, the airstream is much more focused on a blower. The box fan kind of blows the ozone all over in a much less focused area so you get better ozone coverage. And I've been using these fans for quite some time. They're cheap. They're about, I don't know, $17 or $18 a piece. And they last a long time, even in a heavy ozone environment. And of course, these fans have seen better days. They're missing handles and things like that. And if you're looking to get into the ozone business and you do buy the box fans, I highly recommend the black ones because the ones with the white, they show every little speck of dirt, dust, and everything that they pick up. And the only reason I have the white ones is because they didn't have any of the black ones the last time I bought some. 
So as I said, these machines are all 10,000 and 15,000 milligram per hour machines. A lot of times people try to get away with buying the smaller machines, anywhere from 1,000 or 2,000, maybe 5,000 milligrams per hour. And those machines simply can't do what the larger machines can do. If you're doing a really small area, like maybe an automobile or a really small room, those machines might be effective. But for doing larger areas, living rooms and things like that, they simply can't produce enough ozone to overcome the natural depletion rate and the working rate. And the key to ozone working both for odor removal and for sanitizing is really simple. It's ozone saturation. You have to be able to saturate the area with ozone. And if you do that, it'll work 100% of the time. The only time ozone will not work is if you're using too small of a machine in too big of an area. Other than that, it always works. Another thing to consider is humidity and temperature. Every 10% rise in humidity will cut your ozone production down by the same percentage. So if you've got a 10,000 milligram per hour machine and the relative humidity is 50%, you have to realize that your ozone production is gonna be cut by 50%. Also, temperature affects not the production of ozone, but how long ozone lasts. The colder it is, the longer life ozone will have. So humidity and temperature need to be taken into consideration when you're deciding on which machine or machines you wanna get. A lot of these small machines that you'll find in places like eBay and Amazon simply won't be able to do the job properly when you take into consideration humidity and temperature. And it all goes back to what I said earlier about ozone saturation. You have to have the proper equipment to do a proper ozone treatment. Ozone has a half-life of about 20 to 30 minutes. And again, it's also dependent upon temperature and humidity. So when I do an ozone treatment in a home or apartment or even a vehicle, I always make sure that the air conditioner is running because that's reducing the humidity and it's keeping it colder so the ozone will last longer and do the job that it's supposed to do. You also need to be sure that the ozone is going to come into contact with all the surfaces that you need to either remove odors from or sanitize. I do have a video showing a converted shop vac that I use. I'm not going to be using it on this job because I don't think it's necessary, but it forces ozone into places that they may not normally get to. So I do have that video on my channel if you want to check it out. With the smaller ozone machines, a lot of times people may think that if you say have a 5,000 milligram machine, and you run it for 12 hours, that would be the same as running a 10,000 milligram machine for six hours. That's not the way it works. Again, taking into consideration the natural depletion rate and the working rate of ozone, plus temperature and humidity, it just doesn't work that way. So you have to have machines that'll properly do the job. It would be like putting a lawnmower engine into your car. If it does get the car to actually move, it's not gonna be able to do it efficiently or effectively. No ozone treatment should take longer than six hours. If it's gonna take longer than six hours to do the treatment, it would be better to do two separate treatments because during the treatment, it's gonna be using up all the available oxygen. And once you get past six hours, there's really no oxygen left for the ozone generators to create the ozone. So it becomes a very inefficient and ineffective process at that point. And that's why I recommend that people that want to get into the ozone business buy enough machines to be able to do the job properly. Don't rely on some little small cheap machines to do it, even if you have several. It's much better to spend a little more money and get a better setup that'll work the way it's supposed to. It cost me about $2,000 to get set up. And that includes five ozone machines, uh, box fans, some extension cords, and the ULV fogger. And really that's not very much of an investment considering the profit potential in ozone. It wouldn't take very many jobs to pay for that equipment. And after that, it's mostly all profit because ozone machines don't really have very much maintenance. Really the only maintenance that I do is I keep the fans clean and on my machines that have the Chinese plates and transformers, I clean the plates occasionally. Another thing I wanted to talk about was chlorine dioxide. Now I don't have any issues with chlorine dioxide and it works, it works very similar to how ozone works. When I was first getting set up in the odor removal business, chlorine dioxide had just really come on pretty strong into the industry and was becoming a very viable option. I still chose to go with ozone because I like the fact that I could buy the machines one time, 
and there was almost no maintenance to be done on them and they will continue to make money over and over and over again. With the chlorine dioxide you have to keep buying the tablets over and over and they're not that expensive so it really wasn't something where I thought I was saving money with ozone but I like the fact that I can take an ozone generator sit it down put a box fan on it and it does the job. I don't have to worry about using any water or anything like that that can spill in a home or the little turbulators or whatever they're called to bubble the chlorine dioxide out. I like the simplicity of using ozone. So I really haven't gotten into the chlorine dioxide thing. Another one of the things I wanted to discuss was people talk about ozone degrading rubber and plastic and things like that. And I agree, it can do that if it's used improperly. But with the time that it takes to do a proper ozone treatment, which is under six hours, you're not going to get any degradation of the rubbers, plastic, or anything like that. As a matter of fact, out of every ozone job I've ever did, I've never had any issues. Now, if you put an ozone machine in a room and run it for, say, 20 hours, yeah, there might be some issues there. Something like the seals on the refrigerator or something like that. But if you do that, you're not properly using the ozone and you don't have big enough equipment to do the job properly. One resource that I can recommend for people looking to get into odor removal or the ozone business, or maybe even using chlorine dioxide if you want to go that route, is look at the National Ozone Association. They offer some really good information. They also have an ozone technician certification course, which I took when I first got in. And it gives you a lot of nuts and bolts and information that may be harder to find in other places online. And I believe their website is just the nationalozoneassociation.com. One more piece of advice that I would say if you're looking to get into the odor removal business is look for customers that can provide you with ongoing income. Automobile dealerships, property management companies, and realtors. One-off jobs are fine, like this job is a one-off job, but there's not enough one-off jobs to provide you with steady income. You need to find people who are going to use you over and over and over again. That's where the money really comes in. I'm going to go ahead and get all the ozone equipment and the fans set up, and then I'll show you how I did it. Okay, I've got the machine set up, and this is how I always do it. I sit the machine on the toolbox, and I place a fan at an angle. Because ozone is heavier than air, you want to be able to force that ozone up. And like I said earlier, the box fans do a much better job of dispersing the ozone in a wider area than using a more directed blower. So I've set one machine up here in the kitchen and also an extension cord and everything will be put on timers. I'll plug both the ozone generator and the fan into a timer. I'm going to run these machines for uh, I think five hours here because this is a smoke odor removal and I think that's all it's going to take. And here is one of the machines in the living room. And down the hallway, we've got one in this bedroom, one in this bedroom, and one in this bedroom. I didn't put one in the hallway. That's not necessary because I will be turning the air conditioner on. I'm probably going to put it on about, it's kind of cool today. So I'll probably put it pretty low, maybe 62 degrees, and let it run. So as it's dehumidifying and keeping the temperature low, it's also going to be sucking ozone through the cold air return and circulating it throughout the house. In addition to that, it'll also be deodorizing and sanitizing the whole HVAC system. And I make sure all the ceiling fans are on so that they can help circulate the ozone also. I did make sure that there were no pets or plants here. This home does not have any pets and they have no plants indoors. I'm going to open up all the cabinets and all the doors so that ozone can access all of these areas. And finally I place one of these signs at each entrance. This house has a front and a back door so I'll place one at each door. And no one is supposed to be here. But just to be sure, I go ahead and I put these up. So with that said, let me go ahead and get this treatment started. And then I'll come back in and show you how I finish it up. All right, I just finished up the treatment. And I let the machines run for five hours. 
and I gave it a two hour window after the ozone treatment to let the ozone dissipate somewhat. This is the respirator that I use to enter the home. Just your standard 3M respirator from Home Depot or Lowe's. There are additional filters that you can add on top of these filters that are charcoal and they would probably be even better to use. Although with this, this is what I've always used and I've never even smelled ozone through these filters. So once I gave it two hours for the ozone to somewhat dissipate, I came in with the ULV fogger. I didn't show the ULV fogging because it was too hard to hold the camera and I need two hands, one for the hose and one for the machine itself. But I basically just go to the top, spray it real quick. Really it just strips that ozone smell right out of the air. And that's all there is to it. And while the house was airing out, I went ahead and picked up my machines. So they're all good. And I need to go adjust the thermostat real quick. But other than that, that's really all there is for a treatment. Need to turn these lights off. There's really not a whole lot to see. And that's one of the reasons I've never, I guess, did one of the ozone treatment videos. Because it's really just me showing, me setting up the equipment. And then there was no reason to show me breaking it down. And like I said, I couldn't show the ULV fogging. Because I needed two hands. But that's all there is to it. So if you haven't watched my other ozone videos and you're interested in ozone or getting into the odor removal business, you can check those out. I'll link those in the description of this video. These were previous customers that I cleaned for. I cleaned their carpet before. I cleaned the carpet again. I cleaned their upholstery. And although I don't like upholstery cleaning, that's kind of part of the process for odor removal. And now I did the ozone treatment. But I guaranteed them that the odor would be 100% gone or I'll come back and retreat it for free. And to date, I've never had to retreat anything. So I guess that's going to do it for this video. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. As always, I appreciate you watching and I'll see you in the next video.